ABC News Special Report. From White Sands, New Mexico, NBC News covers the landing of Space Shuttle 3. Here in New York is NBC News correspondent John Chancellor. Well, good morning. The Ace Trucking Company, which the astronauts call the shuttle system, uh, is just about to finish its third mission in space with a reusable spacecraft. The spacecraft Columbia is about over Hawaii now, starting that long 4,000-mile glide back to uh, the landing site, which is now, again, at White Sands, New Mexico, at the White Sands Missile Range. About 15 minutes ago, they uh, initiated what is called their deorbit burn. They turned on their uh, engines up in space and knocked themselves out of their 129th orbit, more than 3 million miles of travel, and they launched about a week ago yesterday and they tried to come back yesterday, as most of you know, and they were unable to because the winds at White Sands were about 55 miles an hour. We thought for a while they might have to try for the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, but the weather now is perfect at White Sands. The last we heard about 15 minutes ago, the temperature was about 55, the sky was blue, and the winds were calm, no winds at all. So we think we're going to have a perfect landing. There's White Sands now, the cirrus clouds at about 25 5,000 feet scattered. That's no problem. You can see a little of that white gypsum blowing um, as it often does out there, uh, but nothing like the Sahara sandstorm that we saw yesterday, and that's a live picture there. We have about 37 minutes before the uh, shuttle Columbia will touch down on that long strip there uh, at uh, White Sands Missile Range. So it's all going perfectly now. They had a good burn up in, the, in, the, in space, as they call it. The engines worked, and uh, we're on our way for a landing. With me is Vance Brand, an astronaut uh, who is going to be going up himself in the space shuttle number five in November. Vance spent 217 hours in space in the Apollo Soyuz link up back in 1975, so he knows what it's like up there. Welcome, good morning. Uh, you've been listening to the Thank communication, you, Vance. Uh, <clears throat> any, anything funny going on? Not at all. Uh, John, they had a, a practice yesterday, so uh, I, I'm sure that helps today. It's all very uh, calm, organized, going step by step, not behind. It sounds great. So you think there'll be no difficulty in coming in over that? None whatsoever. Well, they, they'll get a pretty good view of the southwestern part of the United States, won't they? Uh, yes, they will. Uh, you know, they will uh, <clears throat> probably be banked to the left as they, they cross Baja, and they'll be able to uh, look up the California coast, uh, see Los Angeles, and then they'll, they'll reverse their turn uh, somewhere around Tucson and uh, get a view south. And uh, so the whole of the Southwest waiting for them. The, the crowds didn't turn up again today as they did yesterday at White Sands. There were an awful lot of people there all wrapped up, some of them with goggles and sunglasses, having a perfectly miserable time in the sandstorm. And among them yesterday and again today, Heidi Schulman. Heidi, are you there on the ground? Yes, I am, John. The crowds are a bit smaller today. Apparently, a lot of people were discouraged after our awful day out here yesterday. But as you mentioned, the conditions this morning look just fine. Recently, the wind has picked up a little bit, but it's not stiff enough to interfere with the landing approach. And it hasn't yet, at least, kicked up that sand that put us into a blinding sandstorm yesterday afternoon. John Young was up flying weather flights earlier today. He's still in the air. At one point, he said that he could see for 200 miles, so the skies look nice and clear. White Sands has always been Columbia's backup site, so it has all the basics for landing. There are electronic navigational aids out on the two runways here, and emergency crews who will be at work today are based at Holloman Air Force Base just across the desert. But everything else had to be moved here, and the NASA people who did it say it was a bigger job than they had thought. It took 35 hours to ferry several hundred tons of deservicing equipment by train from California. While it was on the tracks, a base station was built near the landing strip for the three to 400 people who manned the gear. They added uh, nine or 10 large general purpose shelters, a large aircraft hangar, uh, lavatory facilities to handle uh, several hundred people, showers, uh, generators, control centers. 
Army controllers at White Sands Missile Range kept their usual track of the shuttle as it passed over the southwest and were joined for landing by convoy crews from California and Cape Canaveral. T-38 pilots who will intercept Columbia as it makes a sweeping turn toward the runway and NASA TV crews who will provide today's pictures. It may look civilized here now, but until midweek you could count the working telephones on your fingers. A NASA engineer called the major accomplishment getting it all done with minimal mistakes. Everybody out here would work free for nothing, you know, uh, coming on their vacation. Uh, most of us are working around the clock and uh, enjoying every moment of it. Even with that enthusiasm, it was a very long night last night for the crews at work out here. The sandstorm yesterday blew drifts of sand out across the runway, and they were out there until 2 this morning working on clearing the sand away so the astronauts would be able to see it when they come down this morning. They are on station now, and they say that everything is ready. John? Thank you, Heidi. Uh, the, my favorite quotation from all of this so far is, comes from Major General Alan <coughs> Nord, who's the commander of the uh, White Sands Missile Range. Uh, as you'll recall, Edwards Air Force Base in California is the, the landing site that they would like to have used. But it rained so much out there that somebody said the, uh, the runway was the consistency of cream of wheat left over about 24 hours after it had been cooked. So they moved it, sent two trains a thousand miles to White Sands Missile Range, which gave the Army out there a bit of a problem. And now we come to my favorite quote. Major General Alan Nord, the commander, said, we've been hammer and tonging this for days. <laughs> and uh, they have, and it's all working, and it's coming down now let's just have a look at the clock and the map to see uh, 28 minutes and 17 seconds to landing at White Sands everything going perfectly and we'll be back with more coverage after this